feel like we seem like alcoholics because the last video we did was with wine. Now we're starting this video with wine. Maybe we should have named our channel Two Alcoholics in Italy. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of, kind of nice ring to it. A few more years, maybe. A few more years, yeah. There's no such thing as alcoholism in Italy. Just, you know, just drink more wine. That's You're a wine connoisseur. Connoisseur, I guess you could call it that, yeah. So we thought we'd give you guys just a few um, tips and uh, things that you need to know before coming to Italy. It's, uh, it's a unique experience for sure. And these are a lot of things that we wish we knew before we came here. And the first thing that we're gonna start off with is the language. It kinda seems self-explanatory, but a lot of people that I see online, so he's not on social media. Uh, I'm on TikTok, I'm on Instagram. So it's funny enough, I see people complain whenever they visit Italy is language. For some reason, people expect when they visit here for a, people to speak English. Not even close, especially if you visit like Southern Italy. Uh, good luck with that. <laughs> Maybe some big touristy cities, you'll have some like conversational levels of English, but anything else in depth, that's not gonna happen. Yeah, but it's fair It's fair to think that they, that they are gonna speak English because realistically speaking, this is a country that gets a lot of tourism and big cities that you're gonna visit like Venice, Verona, Rome, Milan, Florence, etc. cetera. Uh, people do speak enough English to get by. Young people definitely speak English. But if you're interacting with some old grandma on the street and maybe you're trying to take a picture of something she's doing, oh, yeah. or you're trying to ask for directions, yeah, don't don't bother doing that. So download Google Translate and offline it. Yeah. That will be your best friend. It's very simple, very easy, it's free. Uh, sometimes the translations can be a little tricky since Italy has different dialects, but don't worry about that. Again, know some basics. Italians will really, really, really appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, and kind of know like, you no know, ciao, uh, salve, buongiorno, buonasera, just, just little things. It just, it's the little effort that really makes a big difference when visiting. Yeah, and the reason why I think Google um, Maps, offline and Google Maps is important is because you're gonna go places here, especially in the more rural areas that do not have any kind of Wi-Fi signal or any kind of cell oh, phone yeah. service. So if you're stuck in one of those situations, you're gonna be glad you have Google Translate offline for sure. This is something that even after years in Italy still gets us and it's Reposo. Yeah, Reposo is basically this time in the middle of the day. It's kind of like what the Spanish siesta is. Stuff shuts down in the middle of the day and this is often really un inconvenient for people who want to have lunch somewhere. So you'll go to a place, you'll see that the bar or the cafe looks open and you're like, wow, this is great. I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna have some lunch. And you're gonna go in there and they're gonna be like, would you like a wine and some potato chips? Because otherwise everything else is basically closed. Yeah, so the kitchen, even though the place might be open, but usually places in Italy uh, will have a midday break. So they will be more most likely closed between 2.30 and about, I would say 6.30, 7 o'clock. Yeah, and Google is not really helpful for this kind of situation because you'll look at uh, the place on Google and you'll say like, wow, okay, it's open. So let me go there and try to get something to eat or try to buy something. And you realize that the hours are either incorrect, yeah. haven't been updated in a while, or like I said, the bar or the cafe is open, but the kitchen is not open. I think it happens to us probably still about once a week. Uh, literally, I think it just happened to us Sunday. When you're in Europe, just expect that stuff's gonna be closed and expect sometimes you might have to rely on McDonald's. But also in general, um, at least once a week, things will be closed. So usually it's a Monday or a Wednesday. Sometimes it's a Sunday, uh, so definitely plan ahead. The next thing that we wanted to, to really, really bring up are scams and tourist traps. Oh, yeah. Every big city has got tourist traps, some of them are, are common between cities. Oh, so yeah. in places like Florence and Rome, you're gonna see people trying to sell artwork on the street. Uh, that stuff isn't probably painted by that person. So there's two two artwork scams. So there's the one where they're pretending like they're painting it, they're not. You're not gonna get a nice painting for like 10 or 20 euro. Yeah. That's, I think that's also a huge scam in Paris. And the other art scam is, uh, I've seen it a lot in Rome and in Florence, is they'll place in really, really like congested areas, like these prints on the ground, and you will literally step on it because it's just so tight, there's nowhere else to go. And then they're, try, they're gonna try to demand money or you buy it. Just say, call the police and just walk away. They're gonna yeah. try to hassle you, press you. Don't worry about it, those are scam artists. If that guy really thought that his painting was valuable, he wouldn't be on the ground. Exactly. So that's just one of those things. So like one of the other common ones is some guy will stop you and he'll try to give you a bracelet or, oh, yeah. or something that he's quote unquote made, which of course he probably didn't make. He's gonna try to give it to you and then when you put it on, then he's gonna ask you for money. Just ignore them. The, they can't force you to buy or take something. Yeah, they're, not, they're obviously want. not licensed to sell anything like that. Uh, um, the roses, That's I see that so much everywhere. Every major city I think in Europe has their roses. 
roses. Has this one random guy that he's, he's going around with roses trying to give them to you. And he doesn't even look like he's awake most of the time. I don't know if he's just kind of spaced out or what, but yeah, I, I don't know where these people come from, but uh, just keep an eye out for those sorts of things. One of the more subtle kinds of scams though, is especially in places like Venice, are the, they're not fake restaurants, oh. but they are restaurants that are gonna give you a very subpar experience. Like the food is not gonna be good at these places and you're not gonna get what you think is a traditional Italian meal. Usually if somebody is trying to bring you into the restaurant, it's yeah. a good indicator that the restaurant itself isn't good enough for you to want to go in. They yeah. have to bring you in. And another dead giveaway is that the sign is in multiple languages because they know right away that that's for, you know, tourists who yeah. don't really know any better. And if you're looking for like really good Italian food, that's probably not where it's at. Yeah, good Italian restaurants will not have giant pictures of the food. People know what they're eating. So definitely avoid that. Do we have anything else for the scams? Yeah, tours. They don't give. Oh, yeah. So one of the things you have to keep an we eye out for, for too is that, and this is something we found in other countries like Israel, but if somebody is offering you to show you something really cool, it's probably a scam as well. They're going to try to find, they're not going to do anything sneaky to try to jack you or rob you or anything no. like that, but they're going to try to lead you around to show you kind of really okay parts of the city. And then they're gonna try to ask you for money later on and you're gonna feel like, oh, well, you know, I, I guess this guy's kind of like a tour guide. He's not very good at it, but you know, maybe I should just give him a few dollars. So you're mostly just wasting your time and even a few euros. So yeah, watch out for that stuff too. Pickpockets and stuff like that. That's well, pickpockets, I think that's self-explanatory. Yeah, Europe is way more notorious for pickpockets and people who steal luggage. Yeah, um, don't leave your stuff on the tenses. So even if you think that you can replace it, it's just a huge inconvenience to have to go and buy more stuff. So be careful because these people are very, very quick. And they work in groups. They work they, in groups. They watch you, they know. They're talking on the phone. Sometimes they have like a Bluetooth headset on and they're talking on the phone and they're saying, oh, this person over here with a, a red t-shirt or something like that, go for that guy, you know? And they're often looking for people who just don't have that much situational awareness. Maybe they're on their phone. Maybe they're like, you know, spaced out or something like that. So I mean, enjoying the sites, right? Yeah, keep your wits about you because they're gonna find you pretty easily. I would recommend packing lightly because the clothes here is very unique. A lot of times you can go to a little boutiques and actually get authentic, like local made clothes that's you know not made in some factory. And, and you can get really, really nice pieces. You know, if you overpack, bring a bunch of stuff from wherever you're coming, you know, you're gonna wanna go shopping. Everyone here wants to go shopping, especially for leather goods, like the shoes here. Italians, I think I said in one of the other videos, Italians, they love their shoes and you will find some amazing like handbags, belts, and uh, like leather shoes here. You're always gonna be able to buy clothes here. It's not really that expensive no. at least in our opinion you can get the vat tax back at the airports so save your receipts and especially if you're going like we have a lot of outlets near the big cities you can go like luxury good shopping in those outlets and you can get a lot of money back so just ask for the vat form uh, it takes like two seconds have your passport and when before you leave the country you'll fill out this form and you get your money back so it's it adds up yeah and definitely try to be comfortable when you're walking around do not wear heels unless you are like pro expert level because these cobble streets oh my god especially rome and some of the little alleys i swear they they purposely made them so small that they will just sometimes even if you wear sneakers they will still hurt on the bottom of your shoe so like get those like really chunky um what are those pegasus zooms like those really thick or those like sketchers that nurses yeah. wear because you look stupid but you'll be very comfortable because you will be doing at least twenty thousand steps a day that's a given yeah and, and, like, the, and the streets are super super old right so they're hundreds sometimes even thousands of years old and they're not very even so you think you're walking around on some like beautifully historic you know scenario and, and it's true it's really beautiful in a lot of these places but oh. one wrong step and you're like she said your heel could end up in between two cobblestones or you step off the side of a street and then snap you know, oh we something. sprained our ankles quite a few yeah. times over the years i think i sprained my ankle when we were making the potava video yeah at the end of the video i was like limping it's like this is it guys yeah. <laughs> like, you so got it's, me. it's better to be comfortable than Number one, like I said, nobody's gonna put you in a fashion show, but number two, at least you're not gonna sprain your ankle or hurt yourself and you're just gonna end up being uncomfortable for the rest of the trip. Another thing to pack or not pack is the voltage. Whatever electronics, uh, straighteners you're bringing, make sure they are a dual voltage. So look in the back if it says 110 to 220. If it just says 110, do not bring it because you will burn it out. It'll just, as soon as you plug it in, you'll have a giant spark and that thing will never turn on. On Amazon, you can get this really cool converter so you plug it in whatever you have, and then the other side you'll have a EU plug. But that item, 
still has to be dual voltage. Yeah. So 110 to 220 or 240. Another thing to include, I would include inside the packing is, besides packing light, is don't bring like large obnoxious luggage because a lot of times there's no elevators in these old buildings and the little area, alleys, whatever you call them, depends, especially in Venice. Good luck carrying that through that. The elevators especially, I don't know when some of these elevators were made, but I feel like every time we check out an Airbnb in some city like Milan or Rome, it feels like this is the first elevator ever made. We bring it, a duffel bag too and we're like... Sweet. Yeah, even if you've got a backpack and one other person is inside of the elevator, you're just like squeezed in there. They're so small. So yeah, definitely don't bring too much. I think this is number five. So let's talk about tipping, especially I think if you're coming from America. I know uh, tipping culture right now in America, I heard it has gotten crazy. Well, you don't have to worry about that here. Nowhere, I think in Italy, you tip. No, I mean... No there, restaurants. Not that, not that I mentioned, or not that I can think of, but yeah, not really anybody's ever expected a tip even if they hear you speaking in English they're not expecting no. a tip from you they may in some cities like Venice expect to get tips because Venice gets a lot of Americans but a lot of Europeans visiting Italy don't tip either because no. where they're from it doesn't they don't tip so don't, don't expect that you have to tip anywhere in, in some instances like if you have a travel guide maybe you want to give like them a, a tour guide yeah, yeah. you want to give them a couple euro or something like that that's nice but not for food or other services like that so it's pretty cool because like if you look at a place and you see like oh wow this is 20 euro on the on the item or on the menu you're going to go to the register and it's going to be 20 euro yeah that's something i love uh, whenever you look at the price here everything's already included in the price so you don't have to worry about tax or any additional sneaky charges if there are sneaky charges that place is a scam uh, and another thing i see on tiktok uh, a lot of americans uh complain but it's the coperto mm -hmm. so coperto is normal in restaurants here it's anywhere between like a euro to i seen up to four euro and what that essentially includes i think it's almost like a part of the pay for the server it's part it's the bread and the olive oil and like sometimes little snacks you get while you wait and it's like the silverware charge so you can think about that as the tip if you if you want but yeah. the coperto it's called that you'll see on the bottom of the menu they'll always be uh on the bottom of the menu like uh, either two it's common to have two euro that's like the standard i noticed but it, it's normal you cannot remove it it's not a scam it's not th nothing something sneaky that is normal yeah even even in rural italy where we live if yeah. we went to some sort of mom grandma and grandpa owned restaurant there's going to be a coperto charge on the on the on the check so yeah, we've just kind of expected that so far. Uh, another thing you will pay for is it's called tourist tax. So for example, if you're spending a night in Florence, it's, you know, two people. And I think in Florence, uh, I think the tourist tax is four euro. So you will pay uh, per person per night. Yeah. Uh, so you'll pay eight euro. It's if you're not a resident of that area, like if we go to Florence, we still have to pay that even though we live in Italy. So that's just a normal thing. Again, it's not a scam. So don't worry about that. Uh, a lot of times you can pay, for, uh, they want you to pay for that in cash. So do heads up for that. So always kind of have some Euro on you in cash because it's very useful. Yeah, you could think of that as sort of like a tourist tax similar to the Coperto, but for your hotel. So it's just few, it's like a few euro per person. Yeah, um, it's not the major. city is is the, what charges the businesses. They're not yeah. keeping that money for themselves. Yeah, the other the other couple of ways that they can get you on little things is water. Oh yeah. Uh, because when you go to a restaurant in America, usually water is free. They're gonna give you like a pitcher of water or yeah. cups of water for free. Italy, Italy, water isn't free. And that's usually because you're not getting tap water. You're getting bottled water. So yeah. they're gonna bring a big bottle of, you know, a liter, a liter and a half bottle of water for the table. And so you're yeah. paying for that. So that's usually like one to two euro. Uh, and the other thing is, is the um, the bathrooms. <laughs> the bathrooms. That's a are shocker for people for some reason. Like on TikTok, people is like things to expect when visiting Italy. Yeah, you got to pay to use the bathroom. So, but they also have bathroom attendants at most public bathrooms. Yeah. So there usually is somebody there that's keeping the bathroom clean. Using a public bathroom is not the end of the world, uh, but you better have a couple of euro on you, or else they're not going to let you pee for free. So now. <laughs> for free <laughs> yeah uh if you're like in a nicer place like the, let's say the train station they'll have like you can use apple pay or like the the contact list to pay and just go in when the bathroom is paid it's much cleaner there's actually toilet paper and like vernon said there's like an attendant to actually you know make sure everything's working properly if the bathroom is free here i would honestly be worried yeah i mean some of the some of the bathrooms are very outdated yeah I mean, if it's free like you'll be pissing essentially like outside and in italy one yeah. of the things that we have seen quite often 
are the sort of squatter toilets. Oh. So, you know, at restaurants, sometimes you go to eat at a restaurant and be like, wow, the food is great, everything's wonderful, I had a couple glasses of wine, I've got to use the bathroom. So much wine. And you go into the bathroom <laughs> and you see this porcelain thing sitting in the ground with like, areas for your feet on either side. And that's yeah. also common at gas stations. I've had to learn that the hard way. <laughs> um, I don't know if the women get TMI. much nicer setups, but for men, yeah, they're like, yeah, you guys can go ahead and use the bathroom right in the floor. Yeah, so. squatters are pretty common. <laughs> you should see signs yeah. for those public bathrooms. It'll usually show WC. Mm. That's kind of like the universal code, which I think means waste closet. So it was a water closet. Water closet, waste closet. Maybe it's water closet. It's probably water closet. So number six, what to wear. Since summer is coming, one of the first things I'm gonna just mention off the bat, wearing swimwear is not acceptable outside the beach. You can actually get a fine uh, up to 500 euro if you wear like swimwear while you're walking around, because that is considered a bit like of indecency. Uh, so again, at the beach it's fine, but just have like a little shirt or something if you're going outside the beach. Yeah, you're gonna have to like put something on before you wanna go out, go to the uh, restaurant, because otherwise people are gonna, are gonna be staring at you. Oh yeah, and another thing, staring. <sighs> Italians like to stare. Yeah. They, they like to stare. They they judge, they stare. I don't hate that. I'm, I'm kind of well, like in favor like they, of that. They're not judging, they're just kind of observing. I would call it that way. But like, I noticed here, they don't really wear athletic wear, like out casually. Some do, but most don't. Uh, Italians, I noticed they consider kind of what you wear as kind of part of your personality and how you choose to present yourself to the world. And I think a lot of people get this wrong. Like Italians don't always dress up, but they dress very like business casual all right. the time. They just look put together, yeah. you know, especially if you're walking around, you're taking pictures. I mean, you want to look cute in those pictures. That's that's definitely something I think that I've noticed and I really appreciated about them. Yeah. You know, like she said, they're not all wearing three piece suits no. and top hats, but they are wearing clothing that fits them. They are wearing nice. clothing yeah. that looks clean. You know, nobody's walking around like, oh, I, you know, we've seen this before. Like, I'm just going to the store really quickly. That's why I'm wearing slippers and sweatpants. They don't do that kind of thing here. You know, just be a little aware. Maybe watch some walking tours on oh, YouTube. Oh yeah, that's yeah. good. One of the cool things is you can watch walking tours on YouTube. There's a ton of them. And then you can just kind of get a sense of what people are wearing. You know, it's like, so the, the three shoes don't bring to Italy. Heels, as I mentioned, because good luck with that. Don't wear Crocs. I don't think I've ever seen an Italian wear Crocs. And if you're an Italian watching them wearing Crocs, what are you doing in Italy? Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm sorry. But also flip-flops. So flip-flops are only really acceptable, I say, at the beach. But also because it, you don't want to wear flip-flops on the streets, especially if you're walking around on the cobble streets again, because a lot of these streets, especially you'll probably be in touristy areas, they're not the cleanest. And do you really be do you really want to be walking around in a busy area with a bunch of people with your feet exposed when it's kind of dirty? Yeah. So uh, people stepping in your toes, you can trip, you can fall, your feet get dirty. You just not a good time. Yeah, and of course, you definitely don't want to be wearing stuff like that inside of churches because yeah. they like to they take that stuff very seriously. And a lot of times, and we, we saw this once in Asia, um, outside of temples, they have these sort of guides about what you can and can't wear inside of, church, inside of the temples. But in Italy, they do that it's as well same, yeah. with, with churches. So uh, it's- Shoulders covered yep. for women and uh, nothing above the knee. So whenever you're planning to visit like uh, churches or like St. Peter's Basilica, I think for men, you have to have, can you have shorts? I don't remember. We'll put it down below. I'll look it up. But definitely when you're trying to go on those days when you're visiting a lot of churches, all that, have more conservative clothing or just like a wear a cute skirt. If you're uh, wearing a tank top, just have like a little shawl over like a little scarf or something, you'll be fine. Getting around Italy. Uber is not a thing besides Rome and Milan. One of the things that we noticed about getting around is it's actually pretty easy. There's a lot of buses in big cities, especially, and they even have really, really convenient train systems. They love the train. So between cities, like if you wanted to take a train between Rome and Milan, there's always trains oh, yeah. leaving between those two. Super easy to navigate. You can actually see the times on even on Google Maps, but there's an app called that we use all the time. It's called Train Line. You can buy your tickets in advance, see all the times. And when you, when you buy the ticket on the app, you don't have to worry about validating it. So when you buy a ticket, it traditionally from a machine. Uh, you actually have to, before you get on the train, there's gonna be these little green boxes. You're gonna have to validate the ticket because if you don't, it's a 50 euro fine. I've always thought that was such a stupid rule. Personally, is. this is one of my complaints, honestly. Like if I bought the ticket, it clearly means that I have the seat available. 
why can't you just scan the ticket that I bought? Like, why do I have to validate it? Is it invalid if I've already purchased it? I, I don't know. It, it seems kind of strange Italy to me. Italy loves the bureaucracy. If you guys know why validation of tickets is necessary, please let us know in the comment section below because this is something that's driven me crazy for a long, long time. Italy also, and in Europe in general, there are really cheap airlines like Ryanair, Wizz Air, and EasyJet. All right, I mean, good. if you're trying to get like- As long as you're not flying out of Boeing, I guess. <laughs> You can get, for example, from Rome to Paris for like 40 euros sometimes. So definitely if you want to maybe travel with Thin, uh, or even if you want to go, let's say, from Venice to Sicily, you can get a ticket right now, 20 euro. So we'll be heading there soon. Yeah, Ryanair is probably Europe's it's most amazing. most popular um, plane system. Or yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, airline company because it's so cheap to go places. We went from Venice to Malta once Malta. upon a time, and yeah. I think it was like 20 euro. That was round trip. Round trip, so, so I mean, it was amazing. It was how cheap that was. Get an international license. Sometimes they ask for it, sometimes they don't. It's 20 bucks, it's good for a year. Just get it, makes your life so much easier. Do not drive in the cities because especially if you're not used to roundabouts or European laws, it's gonna be a disaster. It's for experts only. Yeah, right. <laughs> But also inside old cities, they have these special designated areas that are only for locals. And if you drive there, you will get a ticket. Florence and Florence is a good example of yeah, one of those. Yeah, our friends got big tickets there. But otherwise, rent a car. Like if, if you're gonna go see the countryside, especially if you're going to, Flo like to Florence, if you're flying into Florence, rent a car, check out the rest of Tuscany. There are so many beautiful towns that just do not get enough love. So definitely subscribe because we're gonna be visiting some. We're visiting one uh, up north uh, this weekend, so I'm very excited about that. But a lot of people are, are especially coming here in the, in the warmest time of the year, like so. in the summertime. And the, one of the things that you have to know is that air conditioning in Europe is not that common. True. It, Italy is much, much better than Paris from our experience. Because in Paris, the only place that we found that had air conditioning, I think, was a Starbucks. And hotels, like if you stay at like three, four, five star hotels. They'll have air conditioning. In the summertime, I like, because I guess I'm a spoiled American, I like ice in my drink. You know, like inside of, um, you're getting Coca-Cola, water, whatever it is. If you order um, water oh. at a restaurant, I don't think I remember seeing them have ice inside of it. Some some touristy areas will have ice, but it's not really a huge thing here. But they will have it chilled, so you'll get a cold drink. They'll ask you, especially in the summer, if you want it room temperature yeah. or if you want it chilled. In Europe, there's a lot of superstition, even from like where I'm from, from Eastern Europe. There's a lot of like superstition if you drink cold drinks or ice and all this. Yeah, it's going to be bad for your stomach. You know, or something the air like conditioning for your cervicale, your neck. It, yeah, oh. Italian. Oh yeah. Speaking of air conditioning, <laughs> Italians have this weird view that if air blows on their neck oh. that they're somehow going to get this pain in their neck. It's the first time I've ever heard of something like this. It's called cervicale. I don't even think it's a real muscle group. It's like if you're in the summertime and you're on a train, oh, it's, okay. it's really hot and somebody's like, hey, I'm going to roll down the window. I'm going to pull the window down. And some usually like older some ladies. Some nona's going to be like. Yeah, some older ladies on the train and she's getting, you know, the air wind blown <laughs> on her. She's going to be like. Oh. Uh, and she'll close the window back up. It, it, it's, it's We've seen it happen, so yeah. this is not like BS. And I think that this definitely ties back into the whole dressing comfortable thing. Yeah, you know? coffee <laughs> culture. So one of the things that's literally at the top of my mind, we were in Venice a couple of months ago and it was still a little warm out. And there was this lady complaining to her daughter that they didn't have iced coffee to go. That was the most American thing I've ever heard in my life. They don't really do to-go coffee here and they don't really do iced coffee here. They have the Cafe Chicorado? Chicorado. Yeah, that's like the closest thing. Unless you go to like Dunkin' Donuts knockoff or a Starbucks, they'll have like iced coffee there. But Italians, you know, one coffee, they order, they drink it and they go. Yeah. Like it's an experience. Nobody's it's not... carrying around a coffee with them. Exactly. And you do not want to carry like a cup of coffee, again, around these busy streets where people are bumping into you because again, then you're going to be mad, you're going to have a bad time. Yeah. So there is no to-go coffee here. Yep. You go into a place, you go into a, let's say, a cafe in the morning, you're going to get a cappuccino, you're going to get an espresso. I happen to like double espressos because I want to make sure I'm wired before we go anywhere. And when you get that espresso, you drink it there, you pay, you leave, you get the hell out, you know. Also don't order a latte 
because that's milk. Yeah. He learned that the hard way. Yeah. <laughs> One of the first years here. Oh my God, the amount of times you got milk it was great. Yeah, you may you may want a cafe con latte, which is a cafe uh, a coffee with milk. Yeah. You may want a cappuccino, which is basically a coffee with like steamed milk. Latte means milk. Since you mentioned cappuccinos, everyone and their mother online says, oh, don't order cappuccinos after 12. You can order a cappuccino wherever, whenever you want. Just don't order it after food. Yeah. Because to, remember, the toilets are paid. So, <laughs> one of my, <laughs> well, I think one of my biggest, I think yeah. one of my biggest overall tips about Italy is don't think that you're going to impress random people, yeah. random Italians, by the way that you dress, by the way that you're you, Italian, that you learn on Duolingo. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like the two weeks of Duolingo that you learned, or some, you know, some yeah. kind of like little book that you bought. Um, and don't think that you're going to. By adhering to some special rules, there's somebody's gonna be like, wow, you're so amazing. Would you like to come over and, and hang out and you're gonna mm -hmm. live some sort of under the Tuscan sun oh. fantasy or something like this? Yes. It's not gonna happen. No. Just enjoy your trip as a tourist. When we go places, if, if they hear us, if they say, if we speak with bad Italian that we want a table for two or is the kitchen open or something like that, they know that we're tourists. You yeah. know, even if we live here, they know that we're tourists. They're like, oh, would you like a menu in English? Great. Yet they say, hey, we only have our menus in Italian. No problem. Google Translates yeah. always there to rescue us. A uh, card has been the last two years, two, three years since, you know, the Rona. It's been much more accepted because they wanted to limit the amount of cash. So card is, I think, most places now, but cash is still king. Yeah, cash is king. And, and one of the things that we like to do is if we're, if we're eating or shopping somewhere that we find to be a little, I wouldn't say suspicious, but, but sketchy. maybe maybe sketchy, <laughs> maybe non-official is a nice way of putting it. Um, that's what we save our cash for because yeah. we don't want to swipe a card and have that be scanned and kept or something like that. Yeah, sometimes the places will have a minimum of like 10 euros. So if you're buying like, like a coffee, you know, a coffee is like one, 150, two euros. You don't want to be paying that with a card because it's going to be a hassle or gelato. I mean, like the gelato is literally like 125, two euro. Yeah. So just have some cash, have some coin for the bathrooms. And when you are getting cash, be very careful of some of the ATMs because they do have places from time to time that have that little skimmer on there. Yeah, so always like pull on the thing. And also there's this one ATM I always see that don't use it. I think it's Euro, Euro something. It's like a, I'll put us the picture right here. Uh, don't use that ATM because that that's just, the ATM has history. I'm not gonna go in depth, but just don't use that ATM. And always decline the conversion. Let your bank do the conversion. So always, when you pay with your card at a restaurant, pay in local currency. In Euro. Yeah. In so, Italy. Yes, because that way you don't want because you'll just get the best conversion rates. And when you take out the cash, let your bank, so decline the conversion and let your bank do the conversion when you take out cash. Eating, I mean, a lot of times when you come to Italy, clearly I think food is one of the main things besides the sites. Italy is very well known for their food. And there are 20 regions in Italy and each region will have their own specialty foods. Like for example, we talked about Venice. When you go to Venice, don't get pizza. Yeah. Get seafood. I mean, uh, don't get steak in Venice. Like, are you crazy? Yeah, Venice is great for seafood. Naples is great for pizza. Rome is great for pasta carbonara. Mm. Uh, Bologna is great for bolognese pasta. So each region has its, yeah. and each city is also pretty well known for specific things. I it, mean, we can do like a video alone about each region and the food specialty and the wine specialty. Yeah, oh. yeah, that's true. Each one, each region is, is pretty famous for How many dishes. wines do you think that are registered in Italy? How many grapes varieties do you think? I don't know. I don't think any Italian even knows. I think this is- Over 400. <sighs> Jesus. Yeah, there's yeah. over 400. So there's a lot of wine to drink here. Well, this one is empty, so I got about 399 more to go. <laughs> but the was a Chianti. <laughs> and the region that we live in in particular, white wine is really, really famous yeah. from this region. So if, you know, that, that sort of when in Rome, I know that's a little overused, that phrase, but if you're in the region, maybe do a little bit of research and then just check out which particular dish is famous for that in that region, so. Or you can follow us on Instagram and TikTok because I'll be posting all the places to eat and what to eat and when to eat. One of the things I don't ever see Italians or other Europeans do is modify dishes. And actually some restaurants will tell you that they don't modify dishes. We were at a restaurant actually where they actually charge you extra if you modify dishes. So that's not a thing, especially their steak. The Bistecca alla Ooh. Florentina, that is cooked one way, which is medium rare. And we go to our favorite place in um, Florence, near Florence. And on the door it says, if you want your steak cooked any other way, the pizza place is down the street. Yep. 
they don't care. And by the way, that sign is in English. Yeah, so it's in so, English. It says a lot. <laughs> so it says a lot. But you know what? That's one of the things we, we just had to embrace because when we were in America, usually whenever a waitress would come by and she would say, hey, what would you guys like? What, 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 what side would you like? How would you like this cook? How would you like that? And, and people tend to modify it. Everybody's got this custom idea for yeah. the dish that they want. But here it's just kind of like you order this thing and they give you that way and that way only. And it's not because, oh, Italians are cocky or like something. You know, like the thing is the chef knows this recipe that the recipe is probably 100 or 200 years old. So they know this is the best version of the recipe and they are presenting to you the best version of the food. So if you modify it and you don't like it, then it's on the chef that he served you a bad dish. So yeah. that's why they just don't modify it. Yeah, if you want your steak, so, if you normally eat your steak well done for some reason. Just uh, don't eat steak. Just don't eat steak. But, well, but just make sure you don't order steak that way. Yeah. And, uh, and then you may end up finding that you, had, you have to go to one of those very touristy tourist trap type places like we described earlier with the big menus in different languages because yeah. those places will probably be more than happy to give you anything you want and how you want it. It's just not going to be authentic. authentic. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Italians, again, there's no tip culture here, so they don't have to be like, no, like in America, they're overly nice to you. They, they don't come to your table like every two seconds. Oh, are you okay? Like they don't care unless you call them. Yeah. So, and I actually, I really love it because I can actually eat my food in peace. When you get seated, like when you sit down, like don't expect the waitress, waiter to come to you like right away. Like sometimes you will wait like 10 minutes for them to come to your table. And that's, again, that's not them being rude. There's usually like one or two people working at a time and they'll come to you, so just don't worry. Yeah, so. they, got a, they got a different kind of culture when it comes Come to, <laughs> being on time is not really. It's a suggestion. It's a suggestion. I mean, even some of the businesses, this is some of my favorite thing. Oh. Some of the businesses will say, hey, look, we're closed for Reposo, you know, from like two to three, 45 or something like that. And it'll be like 4.30 and they're still closed. And the guy will just get there when he gets there. And sometimes you'll go to a place and you'll be like, oh my God, it's 6.30 and this place closes at seven. Why is it closed? He just decided that he was going to close it. A lot of people when they visit Italy, they come here in the summertime, but something they don't realize is August is probably one of the worst times to visit Italy. Yeah. Not only is it really, really hot and humid, but it's also the month where literally all of Italy closes down. <laughs> they do close down for the whole month. When we, when we moved here, first um, the first time we were here, oh. August was closed for an entire month and we got here at like August 1st or 2nd. So it was so difficult to do anything. We, we were walking around to find places and so we would have to walk to and from restaurants just in the hopes that the restaurant was open and thankfully we found a couple that were but good luck in that because august yeah i think that in most places like rome or milan or florence they should people should be all right but italians do like to take pretty much a, the entire month of august off and they go to places like sicily and sardinia and things like that Puglia, yeah Puglia, so but just expect especially if you want to go like outside outside the big cities um the smaller like mom and pop shops they will probably be closed. Yeah. Uh, again, Italians take their vacation, their time off, their family time here very, very seriously. Yeah, they also they also don't just close for August, but you should be pretty cautious of the religious holidays in Italy. Italy is yes. a very Catholic country and they'll have holidays that I never even heard of until I moved here, like Assumption of Mary and- Everything will be closed. Everything will be closed. And you'll be like, what the heck kind of, What's going on, you know? And then you look it up and you realize, oh shoot, everything's closed down today because it's a religious holiday. So. Yeah, also they'd like to take a couple of weeks off around Easter and around Christmas. So, and then um, there's also seasonal places. Like if you go to Positano, if you go there off season, I would say about half the stuff is not open yeah. because they only expect the business to come from tourists during touristy seasons. So they usually start to open up, I would say probably about mid-May. Yep to maybe end of September. That's like where you, they get like the 90% of the people visiting. So that's on those areas, that's when the places are all open. We've heard the same thing about Sardinia as well. Yeah. Sardinia we hear is like, of course people live there, but it's generally open in the summertime. So if you're going there in February, don't expect anything to be yeah. open. So I'm not really sure we haven't been to Sardinia. We'd Yet. love to go. Uh, Sicily as well, but uh, so that's just something we wanted to pass on from things that we've heard from actual Italians who have been to those places. Italy is a huge touristy country, that is no surprise. So if you're planning to visit museums, archaeological sites, anything like noteworthy that you need tickets for, yep. book that stuff in advance. Yeah. Especially if you're coming here during the summertime, like peak season, it will get crazy, it will get sold out. Uh, when we went to Florence for like the Statue of David, you have a time slot you book and you have to be there within those 15 minutes to go inside 
inside. We were there, when were we there? In March, and things were already sold out two days ahead of time. Yeah, that was. And that was March. We so. were lucky. We were lucky we, we had a couple more days yeah. so that we were able to see it. But yeah, you got to be very, very careful. Same in Naples when we were trying to see uh, one of the sculptures. Uh, the tickets for like the day and a half ahead were sold out. And this was, again, I think this was March. It was the Veiled Christ one. The Veiled, yeah. So it's just, you have to think ahead of time to definitely get the tickets you want for stuff as much. What else was the thing sold out in, uh, in Milan? Yeah, so one of the more well-known paintings in Italy that a lot of people want to see when they come here is The Last Supper. We tried to go see that once and we twice. realized- <laughs> Twice. And so here's the interesting thing, right? It's not like, okay, this place is closed for like a day or so. We were, we had to book that thing two months in advance. So that might not be something you get to see last minute. I've heard that in some instances, tour guides, and if you go alongside of a tour. But that's very expensive. Yeah, very expensive. And and, very, and if that's worth it for you to see a painting, great. I mean, I could see it on my phone. Cathedrals, museums, uh, if there's tickets, try to get them ahead, just schedule the itinerary. The first, was it the first Sunday of every month is free yeah. for a lot of um, the archeological sites and a lot of the museums. So if you go there on those days, they're free, but they're probably will be very, very busy. Mm. And another thing I noticed, since I book all the stuff whenever we go, a lot of times things are closed on Monday. So do not plan a lot of museums on Mondays because most likely they will be closed. Yeah, I mean, it's so. it's kind of a shock. Um, I, I would have thought that stuff would just be closed Saturday and Sunday or maybe just a random day, but everybody wants to sync up and just close down on Monday, which kind of weirdly makes things very difficult for the rest of the week because you're like, okay, so all of you guys are closed on a Monday. That means I have to book everything for a Tuesday, which is what everybody else is doing. So that kind of throws things off. But I think, did we cover everything? Yeah, I think we did. Oh, restaurants. Also get reservations, especially if you want to go like to the trendy restaurants that you see on TikTok and Instagram, get reservations ahead, especially the time slots, because you just will not be eating there. there there's no way you're just going to show up and try to eat there, yeah. especially if it's a trendy place. So. Especially at dinner time or something else like that, man, I swear. And it's not even just even the most popular places. Sometimes we've gone to little small towns and we're standing in line, we'll walk in and we'll say, hey, uh, can you guys have a table for two? And they look at us and they just shake their head. They look yeah. at their book and they'll say, how about 45 minutes? And I'm like, well, my stomach's growling yeah. now. So I guess we're gonna go find something else. I mean, right now we're actually in a reservation. I made this reservation in November and we're not going to this restaurant till June. Italians take their food very seriously here. Reservations, tickets, if you can, just make it ahead of time. You'll have a better time. You'll actually enjoy the place. And you don't have to worry if you can get in. I'm pretty sure we probably missed something. Uh, I think one there, or two things. I, honestly, but... we could have probably made this list, you know, 500 things long. There's just an unlimited number of things. You're no doubt yeah. gonna find, even if you adhere to this list completely, you're no doubt gonna come here and realize, ah, oh, there was only, if I was only told about this one thing or that thing in advance, because we haven't experienced everything. Yeah. So it's and just everyone's ex everyone's experience is different. So, but I think this list kind of gives you a good general idea of what to expect when visiting Italy. And if you want to see more, you can always follow us for more because we do a little videos <laughs> or <Yeah>. travel. <laughs> I mean, we try to share as much as we can and exploring Italy because there's a lot of things that we haven't explored yet. And we love to share that with the world. Yep. So that's pretty much it for this video. Like, share, and subscribe because we hope that whenever you do decide to come here, you're gonna have a great time. We have a great time every single time we go somewhere. So that's pretty much it for this video. Let's go get more wine. Yeah. Ciao.